Wonderful to meet you. What's Diamond. your name? Diamond. Diamond. It's a beautiful name. Thank you. I like your slippers. Those are cool. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so problems here. What's your what's going on with this thing? It's my brother's old car. He's got the struts and the uh, rotors. The struts and the rotors. Did he say the front or the rear? I believe it's the rear. When you drive it and like go over bumps, do you feel it and all that? It makes a loud noise. Oh, does it? Oh, are you calling him? Yeah. Cool. They're on. What did you say was wrong with it again? Struts and ball joints. Struts and ball joints. I'll just jack it up and figure it out. And yeah, we we'll get to the root of the problem. Yeah, he said it's the front end. The I'm front. Not sure which one yeah, we'll figure it out. How long has it been doing that to you? I just got the car yesterday, so. Oh, really? I'm not sure. Oh, wow. He just gave it to you yesterday? Yeah, I guess he got a new car. How so, cool. What yeah. a great brother. That's awesome. That is so wonderful. He just didn't want to get it fixed. So, but engine wise, driving good? Yeah. Just suspension issues? Yeah. Well, man, that's awesome. You definitely need some new front tires, I was seeing. Since you just got it, this one looks good. Since you I just got it. I need to do all to Yeah, it. I'll just walk around the whole thing. We'll do a 360 on her. And uh, which will be kind of cool. People ask me all the time, like, what do you check on when you get new vehicles or when you buy a vehicle? And I'm like, I gotta do a video on that. So right. <laughs> I guess we'll just knock it out with this thing. <laughs> well, guys, you asked, and I'll tell you. So here's the deal, guys. I've been asked a million times, what would you check when you buy a vehicle? And I never really did a video on it, but I'm about to. So take a look at this. First thing, test drive. Guys, here's the deal. I'm doing this video for the common person, for the natural folk that would just go buy a vehicle, um, you know, because they need one. You always want to try to knock out your diagnostics the most you can from the driver's seat. Here's the deal. We're going to test this AC. There we go. So we got AC. It just turned on us. Terrific. Now, here's the deal. I don't need scrubs. I was about to do suspension. Man, she's got some long hair. Look at that. Oh, long. Okay, it's not going to stop dinging unless I put the seatbelt on. Second, pull over. Put your seatbelt on. All right, so now that we know our AC works, we're going to do this turn our blower motor off and then we're gonna switch it up to here and we're gonna turn on our heat okay so that was that was pretty instant we have heat so now we're gonna check our blend door all right went to feet let's go to defrost defrost two <laughs> you guys hear that yeah that's that driver's side you hear that so now we're gonna check for windows max radio radio works and of course headlights just kidding there's nobody there but i got gotcha. you now it's kind of easy to check blinkers sounds good now here's the deal i'm sure if it had blinker problems or anything like that they wouldn't let me know that stuff so but you do want to make sure that all that's working accordingly now it's test drive time so obviously i can hear i can already tell there's suspension problems obviously that's why i'm out here so okay so if this is you and you're buying a vehicle and you and you experience this it's kind of one of those situations where you're like, you know, maybe if you aren't aware about it, then probably should just walk away from it because this is something you're aware about. You know what I mean? And if you just don't, if you blatantly don't tell somebody that, then you're just kind of hiding it. You know what I mean? Which is a bad thing to do. Yo. What the fuck is that? What is going on here? Dude, that looks fun. Now the last like three vehicles that I had purchased were specifically for other people. So my diagnostics was uh, quite the same, but you know, I never really put it in a video. So now that we've checked everything that we can in the driver's seat, this is uh, what we're gonna do next. Someone literally parked where I was gonna park. All right, so real quick, we're gonna check that engine light. Okay, so we got two codes here, both leading to a leak detected. Very small leak, in fact. So we're gonna take a look up here. All right, so I was getting a code for a an evap leak which could be a number of things but for the most common reason that i've experienced it was purge valves which i just found it so i'm going to test it real quick it's easy to test with your hand yeah so we have a faulted purge valve all right so now we'll just check some fluids and everything this thing only has like 113,000 miles on it 18 something like that that's amazing you're just a little low on oil i'd recommend getting an oil change as well because it just looks a little bit used up and got no washer fluid all right so we're right at temperature so we should be somewhere in that middle you see that those two those two we should be somewhere in the middle if not a little bit into the hot we shouldn't be low or we shouldn't be too high. 
So we're a little too high. All right, so let's get to the root of the problem why I'm here in the first place. I heard it melt mostly from the driver's side. Definitely need tie rods. Hear that? Yeah, so and this rotor is pretty chewed. You still have some brake pad left though. Still have quite a bit actually. All right, let's check the other side. Yeah, see, and I can just see that rotor is pretty chewed. Then you can just feel it. You feel the width of your brake here. Yeah, see your pads are full. Like someone had to have just replaced these bad boys. So we, we got a ball joint issue here on this tire. Let me double check some other stuff down here. I see you definitely got a leak as well. Oh, that's transmission fluid. And it's coming right out of your pan here. Someone definitely serviced this pan before and put an aftermarket gasket on it. And they didn't align it properly because I've seen that happen before. Your pan is like square and someone puts that seal on it. If they put it too far one way on that square and when you line it up, because it has holes in it, you can still, you know, force a bolt through or whatever to tighten the pan up, but it won't like align it properly. I use freaking, I use this activator sealer stuff anytime I do get pans like that. I just wipe it. It's not a sealed system, which is a good thing, because that means we can just drop that plan, pan, replace that gasket, just put some transmission fluid in. And I don't, here's the deal, I don't service transmissions, like take them apart, but I'll definitely do stuff like that. I'll change solenoids and I'll do things like that, but um, yeah, I just don't take them all apart. But I'll work with you, you know what I mean? We'll make, things, we'll make everything that needs to be done feasible to the point where it's easy for you and because I mean you just got a free car so you know what I mean you don't want to be worried about what needs to be done to it yeah yeah man I'm telling you yeah man I'm telling you I'm actually dude I freaking thought about going and getting like a because I just wanted to see what it would be like like because I always wondered I guess but I've always wanted to go and get like like a four or five hundred seven hundred dollar car or whatever something in that area something that's just like beat up but it drives and then literally just like go to a bus stop and be like, hey, here you go, you know what I mean? And see, I mean, that, I think that'd be so freaking interesting. Because I've always seen, every time I see somebody at a bus stop, I'm like, man, I wonder how happy they would be if you're like, hey, here's a car, you know what I mean? No more. I rode the bus when I first moved to Tulsa. I rode the bus twice to my job and I hated it. And I was like, I'm, I'd rather walk, ride a bicycle, I don't care. Oh, things cooked. It's real shock. Looks a bit beat up. Oh yeah, so come here. See how much that moves up. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'd replace these rear shocks as well. Let me check the other side. Put everything in my notes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> look you got. <laughs> Your valve stems are cool. Yeah, it's the same. That one's actually making noise. I can get a full set. I'll get a, I'll find us a full set. That way it's a little bit cheaper. I'll literally, dude, I'll buy sets when I have the intentions of only using like two things and I'll just hold on to the other parts until I need them for another vehicle just because it's cheaper. <laughs> Did you hear that? Guys! <laughs> Dogs, quit it! Well, terrifico. You got yourself a good vehicle. I thought your first message you said that I did work for your brother. Uh -huh. And that's why I was like, oh, okay, cool. And then when I was coming out here, I was like, oh, her brother gave her a car, that's sick. I seen one of your videos, you were out here, and I was like, hey, like my apartment <laughs> yeah and i didn't read it you i've been here before yeah i know i passed the person i worked for up there they're like you got another one down here the first time i came out here i was like this isn't even a real place this because you had to get here all weird you know and uh by sure enough it was a real place we'll just come back out here knock this out I, this whole week has just been diagnostic, so I'm gonna have a crazy week next week. Okay, it was great to meet you, and I will see you soon. It's wonderful you got a free car. I'm happy for you. Yeah. We'll make it work for you. We'll get that thing where it's like, you know what I mean? You ain't gotta worry about nothing. You can just yeah. drive and have, have a good vehicle. Yeah, sounds awesome. It was great to meet you.